Thank you for joining us. We're so glad you could make it and so excited to take you to the most popular new buffet on the Vegas Strip, the Seafood Buffet at the Wynn. Make sure to like and comment below to appease the algorithm gods. And please hit the subscribe button to help our channel grow. Stay tuned to the end as we have a little secret to save you some money. Welcome to Let's Eat Vegas, a guide to Las Vegas restaurants, buffets, and other eating establishments, showing you the good, the bad, and the delicious. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. In that case, the wind has all other buffets beaten by a mile. But is it really that good? Mountains of crab legs piled to the sky, prime rib like you dream about, desserts galore. It's all a beautiful sight to behold, a grown-up's fantasy and a child's wonderland. Vegas doesn't have any theme parks, but with the Wynn Hotel, it's like having Disneyland and Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory all rolled into one. Wait, what? My childhood fantasy dessert dreams have come to life. Or maybe I finally got my invitation to the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. At every turn, you feel as though you might see Wonka's glass elevator smashing through the ceiling, a trail of everlasting gobstoppers raining down from above. Clearly, Mr. Wynn has created a living work of art where we all can let our imaginations run wild, a sensory overload at every turn, including, of course, our sense of taste. Welcome to the Wynn Seafood Buffet, where the magic continues. The Seafood Buffet is available every day from 1 to 9 p.m., now offered for $74.99 per person. Well, let's get started with the seafood. The crab legs were already cut in half, so they're easy to eat without even having to crack them. The crab meat is very fresh, sweet, and delicious. It comes right out of the shell easily. You can either have it with drawn butter or cocktail sauce. I saw a lot of people with plates and two feet high of snow crab legs, just loving it. This is a great place for crab. I would say one of the best right now because the quality is so good. Sure, it's a little expensive, but everything is at the moment and you get what you pay for, so it's definitely worth it. The Jonah crab was good too, but harder to eat because it was not split, just slightly cracked, but still very sweet and fresh. I've been eating crab legs my entire life. I have to say that these are some of the best I've ever had. They are just delightfully succulent. I've noticed at a lot of places the crab legs have a frozen taste, but there's none of that here. And the best part of the meat coming out so easily is that I can eat so much more in the time allotted and don't have to worry myself about possibly hurting my fingers. Also, the crab legs are self-served, so you can take as much as you want. Unlike some places, where they're doled out in small portions, requiring multiple trips to get what you like, always with a dose of guilt thrown in to reduce your consumption. Not here, though. Let your gluttony run unabashed. The lobster claws are good. I I've heard a few reviews saying they were just so-so, but I found them, at least today, to be very flavorful, and they tasted fresh. I totally loved them. They were harder to eat than the crab, but well worth the effort. I love lobster meat, and again, this had no frozen taste, nor that wateriness that you see in frozen lobster. I do wish they offered the tails here. Even if they had charged more, it would be worth it. I'm not usually a fan of just the claw meat, but I have to say that these are fantastic and fully satisfy my craving for wonderful, fresh lobster. I've heard a number of reviewers rave about the fingerling potato and lobster dish, and so I was quite excited to try it. I didn't care for it. It wasn't fresh, and I'm pretty sure I know why. As a chef, I know one is always trying to respect the animal, and so this dish seems like an attempt to reuse claws from the day before. If done well, repurposing can be fine, but here, something seemed to get lost in the translation. The chilled prawns were large and fresh. They were extremely high quality and full of flavor, probably as good as any shrimp I've had anywhere at any buffet before. The cocktail sauce was also just perfectly spicy with lots of horseradish. I ate so many of these, but tried to pace myself since there are so many other things here. I want to try everything for you so you can explore the buffet with us. The crab and seafood boil is very good. As you can see, it looks mouth-watering, and believe me, it is. I'm going to try some for you back at the table so you can see. This crab is so meaty. Look at this huge chunk of crab meat. Tender, juicy. I wish you could taste how delicious it is. It has that just been caught right off the boat fresh flavor. The mussels are very nicely prepared, possibly the best part of this whole dish. Here in Las Vegas, we're pretty far from the ocean, 
but somehow managed to have some of the best and freshest seafood anywhere. The carving station was fantastic, with so many delicious options. The brisket was tender and moist, just the right amount of smokiness, and the barbecue sauce was very good. The bark is just glorious. It's loaded with notes of burnt flavor from the smoker and is perfectly fatty. It's comparable to any barbecue I've been to in Vegas. I could eat this all day. The prime rib, oh, what can I say? Wonderful, and an end cap to die for. If you've watched my other videos, you know I'm a huge fan of prime rib. And this one was a force to be reckoned with. The crust was a thick salt crust that cracked off like sheets of glass and huge flakes as it was cut into. The meat was very good quality, nicely marbled, and so flavorful, very juicy. The seasoning had penetrated all the way through the beef. It was wonderful. As with most buffets, they'll cut it as thickly as you like, so don't be afraid to ask for it the way you want it. The sausage was not a fresh sausage. It was cured and smoked. It was also very tasty. As for the tri-tip with chimichurri, it was very good. The contrast between the bright, fresh flavors of the chimichurri and the rich, savory umami of the beef worked really well together. But with the lingering majesty of the prime rib still fresh in my mind, the chimichurri steak was overshadowed. The prime rib is a tough act to follow. I'm still dreaming about that prime rib. The rotisserie chicken was very nice. It had a yummy, umami-ish marinade, lots of salt, pepper, garlic, tender and juicy. At the pork station, you have several options, and one option was my favorite dish at the entire buffet. While all the pork is very good, I especially like the Lasham pork. It's magnificent and screamed with flavor. The skin was crispy, the fat was so rich without a trace of gaminess. It's been slow roasted with a sweet marinade, and the caramelization just brought it to the next level. The pineapple and chili sauce was the icing on the cake. What can I say? I want to marry this pork. It's a must try. I know you'll love it. The pizza was first rate for buffet fare. It had beautifully, slightly charred air pockets in the crust, excellent sauce, and an intoxicating freshness. It's better than most pizza you'll find at dedicated pizza places. But I don't recommend eating pizza or bread at a buffet. It just fills you up. You want to make sure you get your money's worth. Dim sum was great. I consider myself a dim sum connoisseur, and this was some quality dim sum. The bao was very well done. The chow shu pork was sweet and flavorful, with Chinese five spice and perfectly barbecued. They have some great shumai as well. I love the shrimp filling. The large roll that resembled an egg roll, called a shrimp crumb roll, was divine. It had a similar filling to the shumai and was great. I loved it. The pot stickers were okay, not my favorite. One was veggie, the other was duck, but they were indistinguishable, other than one had a green skin and the other a traditional wonton color. They both were overcooked and a bit rubbery. But all in all, the dim sum section was a delight. The sushi was really beautiful, but I don't ever really eat sushi at a buffet, no matter how good it is. If I want good sushi, there are so many all-you-can-eat sushi places here in Vegas that are just fantastic. We'll be reviewing one soon that's above the rest and will make your head spin. I must say though, this hamachi is thoroughly tasty. Right now, this is the only buffet we know of with a caviar bar in Vegas. But it was kind of a joke. There were only two types of fish roast served, the kind that you see in a sushi bar, tobiko and masago. There was none of the good stuff, not even American roe. Even though it's not fancy or expensive caviar, they still don't let you take it yourself and as you can see, they give you a tiny spoonful of each. Wow, all the desserts looked as though they were made by the competitors of the British Baking Show. I saw more people taking videos of them than I've ever seen at any buffet before. You probably know by now, I have a serious sweet tooth. The ice creams were yummy. I had the cookie dough ice cream. I loved the large chunks of chocolate and the little pops of raw cookie dough. Each one of them was an explosive flavor bomb. Delicious. As you can see, it's a virtual who's who of desserts. A massive, gorgeous display of treats. Here's the famous ice cream carousel circling around. Don't get hypnotized by it. It's very mesmerizing. It's like being at the Miss Universe contest only for desserts. 
Wow, what a display. Okay, here we are back at the table. Oh my God, this Heath Bar cookie is heavenly. It's so rich and decadent. Bits of crunchy, melty Heath Bar dissolve on your tongue. And the cookie itself is wonderful, moist and pliant. The chocolate chip cookie is very good as well. I love the lava cake. It has a little melty chocolate center in the middle and just the perfect little bite of chocolate cake surrounding it. Fun fact, did you know that the chocolate chip cookie was not invented till 1938? It was invented at the Toll House Inn by Ruth Wakefield. Oh my God, how did they survive back then without this magical mouth-watering masterpiece? The cheesecake has a vanilla cookie crust, creamy, rich, and very good. It has a pink patch of icing on the top. It tastes like a modern condensed version of New York cheesecake with a raspberry coulis injected through it. The creme brulee was different than many I've had. The inner texture was a little thicker and denser than most, but the flavor was sensational. The lemon meringue was just okay, nothing to write home about. I've had much better, not much fresh lemon flavor. The pecan tart was good, but not great, but I'm a fan of anything with meringue, so I give it points for that. I really didn't like the tiramisu, and this little coffee thing, not really very good. The marshmallow kiss, however, was covered with chocolate. It was heaven on earth. So light, and the chocolate is rich and bittersweet. I could eat my weight in these. The little cone was great, loved it. Chocolate cone with chocolate mousse piped inside and a plume of meringue on top. The chocolate banana was great. It tasted just like a deconstructed frozen chocolate covered banana. The churro was dense and the filling was caramel, but not really the best churro I've had. It was a bit stodgy. I hate to sound so critical, but you know, I have to be honest, it's not my nature to sugarcoat things, even when discussing sugarcoated things. I always tell the truth. All the desserts were visually gorgeous, and just one or two didn't live up to my expectations. Fear not though, there are so many wonderful desserts here, you'll be experiencing a sugar coma by the time you leave. All in all, we enjoyed the Wynn Buffet. The staff, so friendly, they make you feel special. I asked where the restroom was, and the hostess escorted me to it. The buffet is just like the rest of the building, stunning. It makes you feel as though you step back in time to a foregone era when the staff went the extra mile to please and one received sterling service. Finally, here's a special tip I told you about. I suggest you prepay so you get priority seating and don't have to wait in a long line. Today, the non-prepay line was very long, but we were seated right away. And bonus tip, there's free parking available across the street at the Fashion Show Mall. And there's a bridge to get you over to the wind, which makes for a very quick and convenient walk. We've all been guilty of leaving the video creator stranded at the altar when we forget to like or subscribe after watching their video. As a reminder, it's free and it really helps us bring you more content. Until we eat again, bon appetit.